give in to your pride. Show me your greatness. Oh, today we have, yes, finally, um, took me a long time to get this set up, but finally we have a live duel between the full power rulers and full power Pepe, MM, whatever you wish to call it. So, yeah, as you can imagine, there is a lot of debate. Uh, whenever a new sort of tier one deck comes out, you know, is it gonna stand up to rulers? Is it better than rulers? Now, on my channel, uh, if you've been following me for a while, you would have known that we do have already uh, a f sort of full power MM deck, uh, but some cards were missing uh, because it was very early. Well, like maybe not early but it was a little earlier this year uh and we only included infinity not things like reflegia or notices but here uh, we're starting off uh and we've decided to let both players start with six cards uh i don't know how you would think that would be the best way to do that should bosch uh should the bosch deck start with five cards because obviously bosch format has five cards or should we just go by ruler format and use six cards opening but yeah um, Maxi, of course, was used, uh, and that is actually an extremely good card against uh, MM, at least on the Dragon Ruler side. Now, the Dragon Ruler side, of course, as you can imagine, has so much advantage by playing hand traps, and of course, being able to dig into the deck for those hand traps with things like Super Rejuvenation, uh, one of the many, many pros of this deck. MM being forced to just... Uh, Start with a bit of a um, awkward play because of the maxi, uh, but it was good enough for the uh, just starting with Reflesia. So we see two dragon rulers come down at this point uh, versus three back row. Uh, we know that one of the back row, uh, well, I can tell you that he has a parallel twister, which is obviously dead. Uh, we decided to not really, you know, tailor the decks for. Uh, what's it called? Um, each other. So we just kind of took like the best build of both decks from their respective formats because it would get too confusing if we if we were to actually include like you know main decking cards against each other in a in a hypothetical format. Do you know what I mean? So it was better just to take the two best variants of their time. So parallel twister, of course, is staple three of, but you probably wouldn't play that against rulers. Um, but I thought it would be fair just to like, you know, like I said, make sure that they, they play like their uh, their variants that are respective to their time. Um, so we do see the bottomless from the Rafflesia eventually hitting, uh, coming out of the main deck uh, on that Draco sack. Um, and again, the ruler deck is just so good at grinding out back row, uh, grinding out against the traps. It's... Uh, just it just fights through back row so well um and we see a warning as well on the final big dragon and then the end phase of a rejuvenation and again it's just the deck like you know you'd think that he'd emptied his whole hand and it's just irrelevant because like he just loads it all up again with hand traps uh digs for more power cards you know it's just complete like reload like just you fire off a machine gun it runs out of bullets and you just reload and you're back to where you started like that's that's how you know some really powerful dragon rule players uh ended up going uh and you can see uh, three trap card or three effects were used on that turn and the ruler player is still on six cards uh, and again here we see on the when MM's turn, just trying to go for that uh, uh, crowbat play with potentially, you know, more crazy things like um, uh, setting up for infinity and stuff like that. Uh, but as you can imagine, the um, smart thing to do with the scales up was to be for another another preemptive maxi. So we've had two maxis. Uh, extremely annoying card because even if you want to attack through uh, and try attack for game is uh, there's no way you can really like stop it uh, because we know that the rulers do play scarecrow and, you know it's not really too big of a worry 
So um, just thinking about how to work out game here. And he's got the hat tricker in hand, so that's that's probably going to come down. Uh, and it's like, okay, so he might have game on board with things like trapeze, but you know, is he going to give him another summon, another draw with this hat tricker? So he summons this hat tricker, he draws again. Is he going to give him another draw? He will uh, for that maxi, and then it it goes into the scarecrow. And of course, you can argue for things like potentially um, making infinity to negate that scarecrow. But, you know, you're also risking the Valor on the Ptolemyus. And that would be, you know, more wasted, uh, what's it called? More wasted resources, more draws given. And you can see here, even just making the Dweller uh, with three big dragons in Graveyard, you know, that enough, uh, that on its own is like very deadly you can see the ruler player like we said grinding through three trap cards on uh, the first turn and yet sitting there with a hand of like nine cards uh and this is where a lot of like misplays happen and stuff from the rulers uh because you know they can a lot a lot of times with complex combo decks like this you find people can mess up just because there's like too many options like sometimes too many options <laughs> can be you know very taxing you know when you got to play through 11 rounds you got to stay concentrated you got to make sure you're gonna make the right play every turn um but of course you know for the purposes of this we kept things very casual uh we made sure that things were very forgiving so take backs and stuff were allowed etc uh because like i said this is an experiment to try find the better deck it's not really you know we're not trying to test like who's the better player we're trying to test you know what is the better deck you know so everyone is like kind of chipping in, trying to find out, you know, what what's the best play at this point? Uh, what's like uh, the better option to use? What's the best XE to make, etc. You know, all this kind of standard stuff. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, like what's what's the best thing to do. Uh, and again, there's that one set card in the back row there, uh, probably making the real player, you know, kind of fearful. Is that another notice? Um, how can you know play around it? What's the best way to play around it? Uh, but he's probably caught on that it's nothing at this point. You can big eye, uh, take the trapeze, normal summon that uh, Flamville, set a card for the scrap dragon to pop dweller. Dweller gets popped. Sacred sword, of course, not being a very any use just now. Trapeze on that scrap dragon, which is game exactly. So, game one to rulers, surprisingly. Now, another thing to point out here is uh, the MM player isn't running Ariadne. And that alone is probably going to cause a lot of controversy. Um, I don't know how people feel about that. I don't know how people will you know, consider that uh, if that's like fair or unfair uh, or bad or good deck building. Um, but after some deliberation, we've kind of decided that Ariadne was, you know, arguably not better. I think that, you know, for a, for a cross... Uh, cross ban list duel against rulers notice would probably be pretty good but you know like i said this is tailored for playing mm mirrors and it's tailored for the actual deck itself of its time so ariadne i think in january probably won't be pale, uh, won't be played because you know you just want to be able to do this like we see here like going into ptolemaeus going into reflegia you know, we saw a big pendulum summon come down there and it was, uh, we saw Valor uh, hit that wizard. Now again, one of the you know many advantages of the ruler deck is being able to play obscene number of trap cards, uh, hand traps, sorry. Uh, you know, like I said, with the super rejuvenation combo, just dumping all your uh, dragons into your second hand in your graveyard and then drawing into your main hand, <laughs> your, uh, your hand traps very very big play uh, and we see here the um, bottomless coming out of the deck for that blaster um, I'm not sure I don't really want to go back and check now as I'm watching this um, but I think that the idea is that the blaster was summoned and it could just easily attack over infinity or it can attack over the Reflegia so it had to be bottomless. 
Um, but I, I'm not sure if Blaster was summoned by its own effect or if it was summoned by uh, a baby. Um, considering how I see another Blaster at the top there uh, as a gold tar target, I think. I think that um, Blaster must have been summoned by a baby. If it was summoned by a baby, then bottomlessing with the Rafflesia was probably the... Uh, it wasn't probably, it was definitely the wrong play. Uh, so that was a misplay. I think that, um, again, these decks have been around for a long time. Uh, I'm just not sure, like, which one is... Uh, which card does which sometimes, and that was... Uh, many people might not know unless, of course, you played in that format extensively, was that the babies stop that dragon from being able to attack, uh, which I think went over a lot of our heads here because... You know, if that blaster isn't able to attack, then there's no point in bottomlessing it. Uh, and we see as well, uh, after, you know, playing a couple test games of this and seeing these matches in action, uh, we've kind of come to the realization that against rulers, Infinity is actually not very good at all. Uh, because, you know, if they summon anything like a blaster, you know, they're forced to, like, negate it or trap it if they have Rafflesia out. And it's like, oh shit, well, what can you do now? uh get big eyed like that's a very very dangerous situation to be in because yeah Ptolemyus is good and stuff but it's like well if you make Ptolemyus then you know as long if you don't have protection for it then you're just gonna get big eyed and that's exactly what we see happen so on the MM turn the only real play is to like as many very good viable plays unfortunately the only option was to Archfiend the way the big guy. <sighs> Sorry. You could probably argue why why not Archfiend pop the infinity. And that's because, well, obviously infinity would just negate the Archfiend. And then you're still stuck with two monsters in the field. Whereas if he pops big guy, you know, he's probably not going to be inclined to use his last negate. Probably doesn't care because, you know, he does have a full graveyard. It's not too much of a big problem. Uh, we see two dragons come down here. Um, on the follow-up turn, uh, we saw a set card, and I can't remember what it is at this point. Uh, I'm not too sure. I think, uh, yeah, I have no idea what it is. But attack over the Rafflesia to make sure that Draco Sack doesn't get time spaced from deck. Uh, yeah, and the Wavering Eyes was the set back row, and that gets popped. So two O Dragon Rulers. Yep, that is that is definitely <laughs> definitely strange. We didn't think it would go this, you know, far into their favor. But, you know, the, it's it's really the hand traps have been putting in so much work. You know, they've really, really been winning the games here. Um, MM starting up Draco plush fire combo. Uh, to be honest, like you could argue Draco plush fire isn't even, you know, that amazing when you have things like monkey board and stuff in this format. You have things like... Uh, yeah, just your monkey board wee turtle to combo with like a wizard in hand is probably better than like plush fire. <laughs> we see uh, the first turn, uh, you know, we have a really strong first turn here. Dweller, Rafflesia is uh, you know, really, really good first turn play against them um, uh, rulers instead of going for that Ptolemyus, which we uh, realized is honestly a really poor play. Uh, the Ptolemyus is not good enough, to be honest. Uh, against rulers, just because the 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 way the ruler the the ruler, uh, like playstyle mechanics of rulers is based all on like special summoning, big guys, you know. So you're gonna be forced to like negate a ruler, and then you negate it, it gets destroyed, sure, whatever, and then they trigger two other rulers that they've banished, and then add those to their hand, and it's like you've you've wasted your one solemn judgment on like a summon of a ruler. Do you know what I mean? So, Infinity, definitely not good against rulers. Um, not not terrible. Like Infinity is probably something you want to make when they don't have six card when they don't start with six cards. Yeah, that's probably like you know what we consider to be the, you know, the correct thing. And yeah, we see Rafflesia not using her effect. Uh, I think uh, we were kindly reminded at this point that. Uh, Dragon Ruler summoned <laughs> through babies can't attack, uh, which was uh, probably not too much of a big deal in that format. Um, but of course it is here. Now, Draco Sack, 
coming down to force the Rafflesia. Um, and of course the rules go to graveyard, Dragosite gets banished, um, you know, but we do have the follow-up play, of course, it's always a follow-up play with rulers. <laughs> um, so Tempest comes out, it's going to search, uh, I think that's a Flamville? Um, sorry for a little bit of a glare issue. But yeah, we are going to see like more, um, more options. Uh, it's not the nutty, crazy ruler thing that we're used to seeing. Because um, we do have a really big field here to deal with. Uh, that Dweller, uh, I don't think that has any materials anymore. So it's not too much of a worry. So really the only option here would be to probably just like... Uh, I guess summon another dragon, attack over that clown, attack over... Potentially King the Fair Limps, uh, probably Rafflesia. Um, just make Draco Sack pop Fair Limps, or you probably do that the other way around actually. Attack over Fair Limps and pop Rafflesia, get some damage in. Uh, or maybe pop a scale. Um, I think that's actually what goes down. Uh, oh no, no, we don't see another. Yeah, we see a Dragon Road, but not an Overlay. We see a Synchro instead. Yeah, so there's a Flamville searched out from the Blaster. Uh, attack over some dudes. And then... Um, scrap Dragon effect. Uh, probably... Pop the scale. Oh, sorry. Popping a scale, probably the better thing to do here. Yeah, and keep the Draco Slayer up. Um, the reason for that is because... If you pop the other thing, the performer pile, that means you leave a performer pile in the scale, whereas if you leave a Draco, a Draco Slayer in the scale, um, things like Monkey Board are pretty much dead, uh, because I think Monkey Board becomes a scale 1 if you have a... Uh, what's it called? If you have a performer pile on the other scale, on the other scale um, whereas if you have a Draco Slayer, then it kind of makes it dead. Uh, and we see we ha he has three cards in hand, um, and they're all high scales, so you see that Gui Turtle, I think, is l scale 6, and then the he's got Lizard Draw as well. I believe that's scale 6 as well. Um, probably, you know, not much point in activating those and using Draco Slayer, because uh, you can't summon anything. <laughs> so there's really nothing here to do except uh, just... Uh, Get rid of that scrap dragon and uh, and pass. We see two dragon rulers coming into the. I believe that's out of the graveyard. And I'm not sure. <laughs> and that that title uh, has a very relevant attack of twenty six hundred, so that's going to be able to attack over Aflusia. Um If it wasn't someone by a baby, sorry. Um, I've kind of sped this up a lot, so I'm not able to like see too well. Feel free for yourself to just like have a look here look at that graveyard nice and uh nice and closely and decide for yourself what you think the best play is because again this is a very very skillful format like the debt the debt um the duels are always over within like two minutes something like that uh two turns sorry but like they're always like half an hour long and stuff you know Um, combo decks like Dragon Rulers, Necros, Performer Pals, like Performer Pals is probably a little bit further down on the hard to play section compared to Dragon Rulers and Necros. Uh, but of course, like a very you know skillful deck. Um, but you know Rulers again, like the amount of decision trees, the amount of different possible plays, is just unbelievable. Like the 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 variety of things you can do the, the amount of things you need to take in consideration it's just really really next level stuff we see um the ending here of Draco Sack and the Stardust now surprisingly enough Stardust is actually really really good against uh, Performer Pals because um he can stop the wizard popping when it gets special summoned uh, and here he chooses to use the 
Stardust on the Draco Slack, the Draco Sack, uh, Draco Slayer, sorry, which is actually a misplay, uh, very, very deadly misplay, in fact. Um, again, we're just sort of being forgiving with the right plays and stuff, so uh, using the Lizard Draw before Pendulum Summoning, uh, Lizard Draw <laughs> happening to top deck the Skull Cravat, Skull Cravat, of course, getting, uh, I think, Keyboard or, no, Guitar, Guitar, oh. Now we have the Pendulum Summon for 4, and we see some really, really amazing plays here. Uh, very exciting stuff. So uh, Wizard uh, pops uh, per the Performer Power Wizard in the scale to get Monkey Board, I think it was. And then, uh, yeah, nothing done yet. So we Synchro first Draco Slayer for another Draco Slayer. Uh, sorry, Ignister. Synchro those two up for Ignister, uh, and then that's going to get a Draco Slayer from deck. So this, day, Dra this Draco Slayer gets summoned in defense, can't be used as a Synchro Material m Monster. However, he can go into Magic Spec to Paladin, and Paladin can bring back the other Draco Slayer in the, um, in the extra deck that was just used to Synchro the other one. And he Synchroed Archfiend for this uh, Draco Slayer Fusion Monster, which is made through Contact Fusion. And I can't remember what he does, but I'm sure he like negates something. And of course we have two Ignisters on the field and he's able to like shuffle away um, shuffle away Draco Sack and shuffle away a token uh, and hit for game I guess, believe that's game. Yeah, so really, really silly, silly plays being uh, shown there. Just the amount of uh, potent combos that are accessible by Pepe. Uh, through the Draco Slayers is like really really good um, but like I said uh, that Stardust uh, probably should have been used differently um, it would have been better to just have left the Draco Slayer to use the effect uh, and then probably Stardust would negate the wizard on the summon rather than negating the Draco Slayer in the pendulum scale uh, and here we see um, some uh, baby ruler plays, etc., going down. Uh, there's a tribute summoned Radox over a discarded baby special summon of something. Uh, because it means that this super rejuvenation is going to get four cards. Uh, Save cards, actually? Oh, and then <laughs> rejuvenation into rejuvenation. <gasps> ah, this fun, fun deck. Um, yeah, so when a card is tributed by dragon rulers, they're still able to, like, um, count that towards the. Thingy. Uh, pfft, can I remember what I'm saying now? Count that towards the rejuvenation count of the draws. Yes, that's that's what I'm talking about. Yep. So, <laughs> uh, Draco Slayer, two tokens, uh, double rejuvenation. So just waiting in the end phase, deciding what to ditch out the hand, uh, ditching emptiness because of course that's not going to be a good card in the end phase. Uh, monkey board activated to get crowbat crowbat getting um probably uh what's that thing called turtle yeah uh and it was uh, just as an interesting point to highlight uh no oh, maxi dropped as well of course uh rejuvenation helping to dig for those hand traps but also when you're discarding in the end phase um with rulers generally like back when they you know were that were a thing um, you could just like discard like all your big guys, but when you're playing as MM, you need to recognize that they can make Dweller. So you need to make sure you keep big guys in your hand. And it's not that simple of just ditching dragons. You need to make sure you have big dragons in your hand to be able to summon them. Because you don't want to be locked down on the Dweller because, you know, having a handful of traps is cool and stuff. But, you know, being Dweller during your standby phase is like not cool. Uh, so we see here uh, Valor uh, hitting that uh pendulum summon for i think like four it was or something like that <clears throat> uh on the wizard uh no that was in the graveyard actually yeah so veiling the wizard on the pendulum summon uh and then so he gets that one draw and then he uses the dweller in standby phase uh draco sack attempts to special summon two tokens uh that gets noticed uh it kind of forces you to use notice because like all they do is they summon two tokens and then they pop your back row and it's like well you you probably should have just noticed the summon of the draco sack 
they attempted some of the Draco Sack tokens. That's probably the best thing to do. And again, um, just deciding uh, which order is the best way to summon these dragons. Uh, or sorry, which things to banish from the graveyard would be the best way to tackle this situation. Um, and again, this is coming right down to the wire. Uh, fortunately, we spend a long time trying to figure out, like, is there any way that Drake, um, uh, sorry, Dragon Rulers can out floaters? <laughs> but they actually can't. Dragon Rulers actually cannot out floaters. So this mascot on the field is, like, gonna save an extra turn because, like, you just can't out it. Like, it floats into Trick Cloud and then that floats into itself. Do you know what I mean? So... You know, you're you're going to be safe from being OTK'd at least. <laughs> Tempest comes down, banishing stuff. Going to get, get some big bellies out of the, the deck for that, I think. I'm not sure. I think we probably... Uh, I think he changes what cards he banished as well. I'm not sure. Tempest is, man, he's definitely... Not the best dragon ruler. He's so small and he's... Sorry, I'm just talking shit right now because it's been like a half hour ado. But it was pretty exciting to watch, not gonna lie. Like, seeing these, like, high sk high skill formats is always, like, super, super fun. Like, seeing dragon rulers in action, like, man, I, w I know for a fact I would not be good enough to be able to play this stuff at, you know, full power, high level play like this. Like, it's really some stupidly thought-provoking plays and stuff that need to be put through you know you gotta think about every single special summon you do so much shit you gotta play around probably not so much in this format like the ruler mirror is like obviously like crazy <laughs> see the overlay here uh for draco sack that gets warninged um probably like was the better thing to do is just like warning the Draco sack. Um, I mean, you gotta force it out, right? Uh, and you're probably not gonna get killed because, um, you know, you've 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 got that Draco sack if they if they have nothing for it. And if they do have something for it, well, you can just uh, you know keep going off with all those dragons. Uh, so again, uh, deciding what to synchro in for ending. Scrap dragon. Popping a scale, setting a card, <laughs> and that's gonna be uh, GG because that set card is, well, as you can imagine, one of the best set cards you'd want to have at this stage. <laughs> uh, so activation, activation of the turtle. Uh, sorry, not turtle. The monkey. The monkey gets a guy, and then we have the emptiness. And that's going to be it.